I'm going to show you how the BBC manufactures fake conspiracy theories to get views. And how do I know this? Well, the BBC told me. In fact, they told everybody about it. They're so proud of their system, they posted it on their website. I'm going to share that with you. They show you a shocking example of a fake BBC story that is so hateful, so deceitful, and frankly racist, that you will never trust the BBC again. So stay to the end to check that out. I'll be starting the BBC's own words. Welcome to BBC Verify. Like you said, we are a team of investigative journalists here at the BBC. Uh, we are also a new brand and we are a physical location um, above the newsroom in London. Um, and the point of the team, as you said, is to verify video, to fact check, to counter disinformation um, and to analyse really complex stories so we can get to the truth of what's going on. Why does this matter? Well, mistruths can cause really serious harm to society and to the people in them. Let's write that down. We'll come back to it later. Why does this matter? Well, mistruths can cause really serious harm to society and to the people in them. And then she shows off BBC's satellite tracking system and BBC's new broadcast building and then gets into the phony verify stories. Um, and there are other ways that we also are able to interrogate what's going on, including on social media. Um, I have some undercover accounts that I've set up for the BBC's Americas podcast. And we use these kinds of undercover accounts. And um, these are the characters that the accounts uh, are uh, belong to, um, uh, to be able to really understand polarization online. Uh, is anyone starting to feel dirty? They set up a pile of fraudulent accounts. Isn't that illegal? to weed out misinformation. Hey, doesn't mistruth cause really serious harm to society and people? Um, and they don't offer us a totally um, exhaustive insight into what's going on, but they can help us understand just how social media works. Um, and then there's also investigating uh, other mistruths and the real world harm they can cause. Um, at the moment, I'm investigating the UK's conspiracy theory movement. I'm trying to understand more about how it's evolved and intensified since uh, the pandemic here in the UK. I'm looking at the alternative media that finds itself at the heart of this movement and a conspiracy theory newspaper that's a part of that as well. I'm looking at the way that alternative media is funded. I'm looking at its impact on local communities. I'm looking at its connections with far right figures and also its foreign links. Um, that's for a podcast series that will be coming out in June. LMAO, this chart is a conspiracy theory. Just like those joke conspiracy theories about lizard people. Though not quite as good as the paranoid delusional conspiracy from a beautiful mind. BBC's delusional conspiracy theory is that far-right figures are plotting to spread disinformation to harm society. And they have ties to an entire movement of other harmful conspiracy theories run through alternative media, which means any independent journalist who disagrees with the BBC. And these right-wingers are always funded through shady links and linked to foreign nations who don't care about local communities. BBC says they'll unveil so many of these conspiracies that they'll have a regular series. Uh, but they have no reports or complaints from the public about real-world harm to society, no leads, no evidence. Uh, that's why they need the fake accounts. But their real goal is political, and they show their bias, even by saying far-right. If they really thought misinfo did real-world harm, they would investigate all of it right-wing, left-wing, or apolitical. So you can see right-wing is just a pejorative. The boogeyman to scare people for clicks. What if BBC can't find any conspirators because their whole idea is fictional? Well, people will lose their cushy jobs in posh climate control BBC offices. And what would you do to get a great job? How about lie on your resume? One time, Miss Spring's potential editor found she fabricated an important part of her resume. Telling me you are a brilliant reporter who exercises integrity and honesty when you have literally demonstrated the opposite was a terrible idea. Yeah, and mistruth can cause real serious harm to society and people. Another funny detail? The job was in Russia. <laughs> Those foreign links. But I digress. Now you'll see the BBC's sting operation in the real world. They find Jasper Machogu, Kenyan, too poor to sue the BBC if this story gets ugly. Organic farmer, not by choice, just can't afford chemical fertilizers and fancy sprays. Posts videos on Substack and X to teach the West about low-tech farm life. Smart guy, 
starts a GoFundMe, which raises $9,000 so the village can pump water out of a borehole so they don't have to walk to the river anymore for water. There's no Amazon delivery, not even a donkey cart, so they walk. This woman carries a bucket on her head and buckets in each hand, but that's still easier than going to the river. On X, Jesper posts a wish list. You can pause the video to read it. I'll just read out a few. Tractors, tap water, he doesn't even ask for hot water. And I want my mom to have a refrigerator someday. These things require energy, so Jesper likes to use the catchphrases, fossil fuels for Africa, and just stop toil, because farming with no machinery is brutally hard work. Now you watching the video, a decent human being, with this information, you might write the report like this. Hopeful farmer fights to lift community out of poverty. Instead, the BBC Verify fact checkers published this. How a Kenyan farmer became a champion of climate change denial. Oh, I'm going to be sick. And they also have a Facebook version and a podcast. He's flag bearer for fossil fuels in Africa. Makes him sound like CEO of Exxon Mobil. His supercharged profile makes him the champion of the disinformation campaign. He's really, really dangerous. Because if that conspiracy theory spreads, it could undermine climate action. And as Kenyan tractors are responsible for the weather in England, oh, this will hurt local communities. Like the reptilian chart, the conspiracy theory invented by the BBC makes its tenuous connections. So Jasper isn't just the champion of his conspiracy. He's connected to the greater conspiracy movement. BBC ties Jasper to unspecified conspiracy theories about vaccines, COVID, and Ukraine, with no evidence. It's just to multiply the hatred BBC can direct at him. If you got COVID, blame him. Alternative media. Anyone engaging with Jesper on any social media is also labeled a conspiracy theorist. Which brings us to funding. Oh, he's received thousands of dollars from fossil fuel interests. Just another fabrication. I'll read near the end to see it was only $9,000 it took two years to raise. Yes, it was the donations for the borehole. But later, BBC makes another claim, trying to link the money to oil company payoffs. They offer no names, no evidence. Like if they knew British Petroleum gave anything, they would tell us. Fabrication and innuendo. We've already seen funding linked to Western oil connections. But BBC is upset that most of his ex-followers aren't African. They're from U.S., U.K., and Canada. Scandal! Ah, the real-world harm! And BBC's manufactured plot isn't complete without connecting to a far-right figure. So they have to mention Jordan Peterson once retweeted Jusper. Oh, he's Canadian! There's another nefarious foreign link. So remember why the BBC is crucified in Jusper Machogu. Why does this matter? Well, mistruths can cause really serious harm to society and to the people in them. So here's what mistruths they fact-checked to stop serious harm. A warmer climate is good for life, Mr. Muchogu wrongly claimed in a tweet. The BBC has become Orwell's Ministry of Truth. You can't even have your own opinion on the weather. There is no climate crisis. And the Nobel winner for physics agrees. But BBC won't mess with that white guy. A funny if BBC's employees really believed we were in a crisis, they would be living a lifestyle like the Kenyans. It's not about truth, it's about party ranks. We need fossil fuels to develop our Africa, and climate change is employed by Western nations to keep Africa poor. Sounds extreme, but BBC proves them right in this very same article. BBC, a five billion pound Western corporation, cried scandal when a poor African village got a mere $9,000 for clean water. Read the conclusion of this article a couple times to understand the different levels of BBC racism. They say Africans should not decide for themselves their energy future because they're too climate illiterate. I mean, too stupid and ignorant. People who are highly paid to push Western net zero talking points argue that Africans should reject development as they're better off staying as they are. They shouldn't listen to Africans who want a better life because they are dangerous. 
In the holy name of climate change, they demonize Jasper Machogu, a man whose carbon footprint is zero, the enemy of the planet. They already possess every item on Jasper's wish list, but they would never sacrifice even one of them so Africans could have a share. These self-righteous BBC pricks have never lived a day without running water, electricity, and access to modern transportation. But Jasper's mum can never have a refrigerator for as long as she lives because it would cause real world harm. How can people be so cruel to each other? I cover this story in greater detail in my video, African Farmer Battles BBC Racists. Please share it and pass the word that BBC can't be trusted. Click the end screen at the top left on YouTube or look for this thumbnail on other platforms.